servants of Allah, I counsel all of you and I counsel myself first and foremost to ask forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the human condition is a condition of trials and tribulations and overcoming those trials and tribulations. But the question that has to be asked is how do we overcome our trials and tribulations? And this is really what the Prophets, peace be upon all of them, from the first Prophet until our Prophet all of the Prophets came with the same essential message to teach people the right way, to teach people the right path, what's called the Sirat al-Mustaqeem, the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَلَّوْا اسْتَقَامُوا عَلَى الطَّرِيقَةِ إِذَا أَسْقَيْنَاهُمْ مَا أَنْ غَدَقَ Had they been upright on that path, they would have been given rain in copious amounts, in abundance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people. These tests are to bring us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَرْجِعُونَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ in order that you are humbled by your sins, by your mistakes, that you try to redress and rectify them. The basic morality of our species is very simple. It's not a difficult morality. And so when we talk about sinfulness, which is almost a word that has been excised from the English vocabulary, it's a word that people want to remove from their dictionaries, from their lexicons. They have criminal law, which is positive law, made by men. But there's other law working in the world. It's a metaphysical law. It's a law of cause and effect. It's a law of you sow, you reap what you sow. And the basic morality of the human being was summed up in the Ten Commandments. This was a country, despite all of its uh, problems in the past, it had an ideal commitment to those Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were enshrined in many places. They've been removed because they say that we separate church and state, which is fine to separate church and state. But it doesn't change the fundamental truths of those commandments, which are shared throughout the world, whether you're Abrahamic people or not. Peoples everywhere had an understanding of those basic commandments. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-An'am and other places in the Qur'an, there are three places where Allah sums up the morality of this book, the morality of the Qur'an. Ta'alo, ta'alo. Ta'alo means to come, but it also means to elevate yourselves. Elevate yourselves to the discourse of this book. Atru alaykum ma harama rabbukum. You know, I, come and listen to what your Lord has told you is prohibited for you to do is prohibited for you to do. Allah to shuruku bihi shay'a. That you don't associate with your Lord. This is the first in the Decalogue of the Jews and the Christians. And we share this land with many Jews and Christians. This is the first commandment in the Decalogue. Thou shalt have not, not have gods beside me. Allah says, لا تشرك بِهِ شَيْعَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Honor thy parents. Honor thy parents. This is the fundamental relationship if this relationship is upset, then the balance is upset. And we see everywhere parents being disregarded, disrespected by their children, even murdered in many cases. Now matricide and patricide has become a common occurrence in our newspapers of, of people killing their own parents. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the parents, because there's a two-way relationship. There's a two-way relationship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقْتُرُوا أَوْلَادِكُمْ خَشَّةِ إِمْنَاقِ Don't kill your parents. Don't kill your children out of fear of poverty. Don't abort your children. Don't spiritually kill them. Don't force them to do things that are inappropriate for them. So the parents also have a, right, uh, have a responsibility to honor their children. The Christians have an understanding of this in their own book, in the New Testament. Paul says to the people, honor your parents. But then he says to the parents, don't give your children reason to dishonor you. This is the relationship. And this is the foundation of human society, is, is the family. And if the family becomes corrupt, if the family becomes debased, if the relationship between the parents is disrupted with their children, then this is the beginning of the chaos in a society. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ We will provide for you and them. We will provide for you and for them, for your children 
and for you. Don't worry about your provision. If you honor these laws, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بطن. Now we move in to the next relationship between the self and the sinfulness of the soul. These are called in some traditions the hot sins. Don't go near sexual perversions and deviations. Don't go near them. لا تقربوا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن. What is manifest from them and what's hidden? The hot sins of human beings. ولا تقتلوا النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق. And don't kill, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not fornicate. These are, these are basic messages that have been given to us as guidelines for our lives. They're not difficult. That's what Allah has counseled us to do. That in order that you might understand and use your intellects. And now we move into the real grave sins after these, which are the sins of commerce. Don't go near the, the wealth of the, the orphan. Those people, the, the children, don't devour or consume their wealth. And be just in your commerce, in your commercial transactions. You look at how our country has become filled with, with the sinfulness of Wall Street, the sinfulness of all of these haram transactions and abuse of people's wealth is widespread rampant in our country. And these are the sins that the religions don't talk about anymore. The economic sins. The recent Pope began to address them and they called him a communist. Simply for bringing up the economic sins against poor people. But these are real sins. And then, a reminder. We don't, we don't give you more than you can bear. You can practice these things. These aren't things that are outside of your ability to practice. This basic fundamental morality. It's not outside of your ability. And when you speak, speak upright, speak truthfully, speak justfully. Even if it's against your own people, your own relatives, even if it's against your own religion. If your co-religionists are doing things that are wrong, you have to speak out against it. Because truth is truth, no matter where it comes from. And the Muslims should be people of truth. Shuhada. Witnesses. We're supposed to be witnesses and you look at what Muslims are doing everywhere. Our community is filled with sinfulness. We're filled, we have racism. We have racism in our community. The Prophet prohibited racism. And then we have the cheating. The lying. And then we have these crimes of, terrible crimes against people, against masjids. And now we see what's happening all over the world. If people don't wake up and see how serious what's happening, look at Ukraine. Ukraine is, is in a major crisis. Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq. What will it take? Does it have to come here until we wake up? What does it take for human beings to wake up and simply do one thing? Tumu ir Allah. Just turn back to your Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fulfill this covenant with God. This is a simple covenant. Just a few commandments. Fulfill this covenant with God. Fulfill this covenant. This is what Allah is asking us to do. Right now, the scientists say that there is about four miles up along the coast of California is, is a pressure that's preventing storms from coming in. It's, it's like a wall that has been put up. Who put that wall up? You see, these, the materialists don't believe these things anymore. But the people that were here before, they had Ohlone Indians that were here before. If they had drought, they knew what to do. They would ask forgiveness. They would go make atonement. 
Aboriginal peoples understand this. Modern people have become so divorced from nature, people now, they think, oh, what a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day indeed, but it's not a day to make you smile when it should be raining. It's not a day to make us smile. We should be, we, we should be worried. Governor Brown said that this is only the beginning. This is only, that's what he said. Now he has privy to information we don't have. What do they know that we don't know? What's going on? Because everywhere this planet seems to be in turmoil, not just in human turmoil, but natural turmoil. And there's a relationship, and this is what modern people deny. They deny the relationship between human behavior and between the natural world. But the, the ancients all understood this. They understood this. They understood Ate. They understood Nemesis. The Greeks understood it. The Hindus understood it. The Buddhists understood it. The Muslims understood it. The Christians. The Jews. They all understood it. Modern man doesn't understand it. Modern man is in denial. Modern man thinks that, that his actions have no impact. As long as he's not hurting anybody. No! Our actions have great impact and we're hurting many, many things. <coughs> Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, إِنَّ الْحُبَارَ تُمُوتُ فِي وَكْرِهَا بِظُلْمَ ظَالِمُ That even the bird dies in the nest because of the sins of human beings, their oppression against themselves and against others. The drought is from our own doing. I once said to my Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya that the biggest terrorist is nature because he can do what no terrorist can do. And he said, no, the biggest terrorist is the human being because nature only does to the human being what the human being deserves. That any affliction that comes to you is from what your own hands have brought. And how much does he forgive? He forgives much. Allah. If Allah took human beings to account, He wouldn't leave anything left on the earth. The Prophet said, Go easy with your Lord. Because had it not been for the children that are suckling, and for young people with piety, and for animals grazing, he would not have left any of you. So this is something for us to think deeply about, to, to, to contemplate. In our tradition, even the, the, the Ahlul Kitab are to come out. They're welcome to come out and pray with us because we're all in this together. We're all in this together. And we need the prayers, we need fasting, we need tawbah. People should be doing things, really, because it affects all of us, it affects our children. If this drought continues, you will see serious consequences to this drought. Already they're starting to show, but they will get worse. There will be rationings of water. People will be forced to ration the water they use in this state. And that's why we need the rain. May Allah give us rain. May Allah forgive us. Aqulu qawli hala wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Faqultu astaghfiru rabbukum. Innuhu kana ghaffara yursil al-samaa alikum min darara wa yumdidkum bi amwalim wa banina wa yaj'al lakum jannatim wa yaj'al lakum anhara. Nuh, they laughed at Nuh, and people now they can laugh at people coming out to pray for rain. Right? People don't believe in these things anymore. Many people don't believe in these things. They, that's fine, they laughed at Nuh. They, they can laugh. But we believe in God. We believe that it's God that, that rules this universe. That there's a power behind all of this. That there's a reason why we were created. There's no shame. This is what, this is what should give human beings some sense of pride that they're servants of their creator, that they're grateful to their creator. Not that they, that this is some kind of backward, pre-modern thinking before we knew all the answers. No, you, why can't they with all the technology, why can't they bring the rain? All they can ask you to do is ration. 
This is the extent of all this knowledge that they have. They just tell you, use less water. That's all they have. You can't see clouds that aren't in the sky. We believe that God is the one that brings the clouds. He has angels that, that have this system. The Quran talks about the riyah as a sign of God. Now we know how sophisticated the wind system on this planet is. It's a very sophisticated system. And now we know. We didn't know that knowledge, but the Quran had that knowledge. Now, in conclusion, the Prophet ﷺ told us some very profound things. And this is about the metaphysical nature of our actions and our behavior. And he sought refuge in these things. He told the Ma'ashar al Muhajirin. He told them about certain khisal, qualities in people. And he said, A'udhu billahi an tudrikuhunna. I seek refuge in God that you never see this. The first one he said, ما ظهرت الفاحشة في قوم حتى أعلنوا بها إلا ابتلوا بطواعين والأوجاع لم تكون في أسلافهم الذين مضوا This is the first one that sexual deviations and perversions never manifest in a people except God afflicts them with diseases that were unknown to the previous generations. They will get diseases. This is a metaphysical reality. Now some people will say, but that how it doesn't just affect them, it affects everybody. Exactly. That's what the Quran says. Be protect yourselves against calamities that don't just afflict, afflict the wrongdoers. Because if it only afflicted the wrongdoers, everybody would just say, well, let them do their wrong and they'll get theirs. No. But because it afflicts all of us, we have to stand up and condemn it. We have to say this is wrong. They can say to us, just respect us, we respect you, respect us. No, in order for you to respect us, you have to respect our, not only our right, but our understanding and our responsibility to condemn what you're doing, to condemn it. We have to, in order to be true to our faith. In order to protect and guard ourselves from what we believe are calamities that won't just afflict you, but they will also afflict us. This is a real problem on this planet now, these differences of understanding. But as far as I can tell, science is on our side. If we're really rational, if we really believe in rationality and what makes sense and what science is telling us, Science is telling us there are certain things that you shouldn't do because they're dangerous. And as far as I know, there's nothing in our religion that's halal, that's harmful. But everything that's prohibited has harm in it. There's nothing in our religion that's prohibited that doesn't have harm in it. Nothing. And everything that's permitted is good for us. It's just using the intellect. What's better than Allah's judgment? So that's, that's the first. But then he said the second one. مَا نَقَسَ قَوْمٌ مِنَ الْمِزَانِ أو النكيال, That no people become unjust in their commercial transactions إِلَّا Except that they get the tribulation of sinin. And this is drought that continues. See people, again, religions only talk about sexual problems. Our religion addresses the grave sins of economics. And you look at the economic inequality now that they're all talking about finally. They're starting to talk about this income inequality. These are the reasons that, that people are, brain is withheld from people when there's economic injustice. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us through His Prophet. So this is a grave tribulation. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if a people, if they, ref, if they refuse, مَا مَنْ عَقَوْمٌ زَكَاةَ أَمْوَارِهِمْ إِلَّا بْتُلُوا بِحَبْسَ الْقَطَرِ The rain, if, if they don't help poor people, because economic injustice is one thing, where you steal from people, exploit them, all these things. But then, when you have wealth, and you don't help others with the wealth, then the rain is withheld from you. This is what our Prophet ﷺ said. These are metaphysical realities and you can't get around them. The Christian people and the Jewish people, their tradition, they know many of these things. 
But unfortunately, many of them have forgotten. The Quran says that had they only established the Torah and the Injil, had they only established the Torah and, and the Gospel and what has come from their Lord, they would eat from, from, from above them, from the fruit trees, and from below them, from what comes from the earth. They would eat from all that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, minhum ummatun muqtasida. There are good people amongst them, righteous people, moderate people. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ سَعَى مَا يَعْمَلُونَ But many of them no longer practice what they know to be true. And they've left it. So we're living in a country that has made many positive strides, undeniably. And we have to acknowledge that. But there are many things that they've gone backwards on. And we see the result of it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins. I'm going to turn towards the Qibla, make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer all of our prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring rain, inshallah, that nurtures the earth. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم لا نحسي ثناء عليك أنت كما ثنيت على نفسك يا عظيم يا كريم يا جبار يا غفار يا ذو الجلال يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أنت خالق كل شيء أنت رب العالمين أنت خلقتنا أنت رحمتنا أنت رزقتنا أنت أكرمتنا وأنت أنت أحسنت إلينا ونحن أسأنا إليك بذنوبنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا اللهم إن ذنوبنا قد حبست عنا الأمطاء ونحن نعترف أمامك يا أرحم الراحمين إن ذنوبنا قد حبست عنا الأمطاء Our sins have made this water be prevented from us Oh Allah forgive us our sins اللهم أسقي بلادنا Give our land water Give our animals water. Amen. Give our children water. Amen. Ya Allah, give the innocent among us water. Ya Allah. Allahumma aghfir lana wa arhamna wa tub alayna. Allahumma ahyi al-balad al-mayyit. Allahumma inna ka qubta. Wa a'lamu anna Allah yahyi al-ard ba'na mawtiha. And know that, that your Lord brings the earth back to life after it's dead. Allahumma show us your signs. Let us see the earth come back to life. We see its death and we know the reason. We know our sins and we ask you forgiveness. Ya Arham al Rahimin. Allahumma bring this earth back to life. Anta Arham al Rahimin. Allahumma fillana wa rahamna wa fir al Muslimin wa al Muslimat al Ahya minhum wa al Amwat. Allahumma la tu akhidna bima va'ad al Sufaha umina. Allahumma la tu akhidna bima va'ad al Sufaha umina. Ya Arham al Rahimin. Allahumma ya Rabb al Alameen. Ya Malik yom yidin. Allahumma fillana ya Arham al Rahimin. اللهم قبت وقولك الحق استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا فها نحن نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم أرسل علينا أمطارا اللهم أرسل علينا أمطارا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتوب علينا إنك أنت التواب اللهم بارك في حبيبنا سيدنا محمد الذي رفع يديه وكونت الصحابة ما معيون الصحابة يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كما دعاك يا الله نحن ندعو بسنته في هذا الاستسقاء اللهم ارزقنا يا الله اللهم ارزقنا ولا تحرمنا أنت أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا ترك لا تترك أحدا من هذه الجماعة إلا غفرت ذنوبه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أستر عيوبنا يا الله واغفر ذنوبنا يا الله اللهم بعد الجرائم والمحرمات من هذه الأرض يا الله الله محفظ شبابهم وردهم إلى 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 طاعة يا رحم الراحمين اللهم ردهم إلى طاعة يا رحم الراحمين اللهم نظف قلوبنا وطهر ألسنتنا وآذاننا يا الله اللهم بعدنا عن الفواحش والمنكرات يا رحم الراحمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك نحمدك ونشكرك ونتوب إليك يا الله لا إله إلا أنت 
اللهم إنا نقول ونحن مسلمون أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بحق هذه الكلمة استجب لنا إنك قلت ادعوني استجب لكم اللهم نحن ندعوك فاستجب لنا سبحانك يا الله لا إله إلا أنت سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين Bismillah, the, the, the sunnah is to repeat this if rains don't come until they come. So my recommendation for people in the masajid that we should do the salat al-istisqa. People are busy, it's difficult for them to come out. But we can do inshallah in the, in the masjids, people inshallah in our different masjids. And we should ask people around California, the Muslims, to do this inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.